the Lord. Today the message is entitled Darkness Before the Morning. Hallelujah. Darkness Before the Morning. There was an author who once wrote that it is darkest at dawn. And dawn is the moment before the sun comes out. And this writer was implying that before the sun comes out, it gets really dark. And then the sun comes out. So today's message is saying that it is darker before the morning. And we use the readings from the life of Joseph and the life of the Israelites. Now, if you look at the life of Joseph, Joseph initially was living a happy life with his family, with his father. He was the beloved son of the father. Everything was okay. Things are great. Life is good. And then, out of the blues, life turned upside down for him. Many of us, our life is like that. There were times in our life when life was good. Everything was okay. We didn't have a worry. We didn't have a stress. We didn't have a sickness. We didn't have any issues. Life was good. Life was good for Joseph when he was in his father's house. He was the beloved son. He had the coat of many colors. He was the dreamer. He was the one the Lord revealed things to. Then one day, he found himself in a well. And while he was down in the well, I'm sure he started asking himself, God, why? What am I doing here in the well? I thought you said that one day my brothers were going to bow down to me. What am I doing here in the well? I'm sure you too, in the middle of your crisis, in the middle of your problems, in the middle of whatever you're going through, you are wondering, Lord, what am I doing here? Hallelujah. In the middle of your crisis, you are wondering, what, Lord, am I doing here? Why are things the way they are here? Why am I in this crisis? Why am I facing this sickness? Why is my life so out of whack? Why is my marriage in crisis? Why are my children behaving the way they are? Why are things going crazy around me? And you don't seem to have an answer. And I don't have an answer for you today as you hear this message. I'm just saying that in life, it is bound for some times in our life for things to go out of whack, for things to go crazy, for life to be so complex that we find ourselves in the situation where we can't seem to get anything right. And that's what happened to Joseph. So one minute he's in the well. Then he's being pulled out of the well. He thinks, okay, oh, I'm free now. Sometimes that's what happens in our own life. We are in some crisis and all of a sudden there is a little reprieve. We think, ah, ooh, that must have been something. And then all of a sudden, he found himself being sold into slavery. He was on the back of a camel heading to Egypt. He gets to Egypt and they sell him into the house of Potiphar. Now things are crazy from a beloved son to be a slave. But you see, when God is with you, even in the middle of your crisis, even when things are not going right, God is still with you. Even when things look crazy, God is still with you. Even when things are out of whack, God is still with you. So, Joseph in Potiphar's house, because God was still with him, Potiphar began to see something in Joseph and began to give him more responsibility and more responsibility and more responsibility. And soon, Joseph was in charge of the entire household. Amongst all the slaves, he was the senior slave. Brethren, you too 
all of a sudden you will see that the Lord has lifted you to a new place, to a new dimension, to a new level. But you see, that's not that wasn't the end of uh, Joseph's life. Whilst things began to look good, yeah, he's not a father's favorite, but now he's in charge of all the household of Potiphar. He's in charge of all the slaves. He says, go and they go. He says, sleep and they sleep. But in the middle of that came a new crisis. In the middle of that, he began to see himself facing a problem. And the problem was Potiphar's wife began to lust after him. And if he wouldn't do what Potiphar's wife wants him to do, then all of a sudden, he found himself in prison. Hallelujah. He found himself facing all kinds of crises in his life. Then he found himself in prison. Now he has hit rock bottom. Maybe you are at that stage of your life where you've also hit rock bottom. You are at that stage of your life where nothing seems to be going right. So Joseph is in prison. Now Joseph being in prison, because the Lord was also still with him, he began to find favor amongst the prisoners. He began to be excel amongst the prisoners. And the warden began to give him a lot more responsibility amongst the prisoners. So even in prison, even in prison, Joseph, the glory of God was on Joseph. In the middle of your crisis, the glory of God is still with you. In the middle of your problem, oh, the Lord is still with you. He has not forsaken you. He has not given up on you. Yeah, things are not perfect. Oh, you are not in your father's house back home in Israel. Oh, right now, you are no longer the head slave in the house of Potiphar. You are now in prison. But even in prison, the Lord was using Joseph. The Lord was doing exploits in Joseph's life. Even in prison, Joseph was a beloved of the, amongst the prisoners. So some had dreams and he was able to translate it for them. The dreams came true. One was killed and the other one was set free. When the one who was set free was going, Joseph says, you are going to be close to the king or the pharaoh when you get a chance tell the pharaoh about my my situation that i didn't do anything wrong and yet i am being imprisoned for something that i didn't do but the gentleman got there and the gentleman forgot Brethren, some of the times in our life, we rely on somebody and we are hoping they will come through for us. We are hoping they will also answer us. We are hoping they will speak for us. We are hoping they will help us. We are hoping we can count on them. Oh, but they will forget about us. They won't be there when you need them. They've forgotten about you. Oh, they said they were going to help you, but they forgot. When they needed your help, you are available. Now you need their help, and they are no longer where to be found. The, the, the servant went back to the palace, and for two whole years, totally forgot what Joseph had asked him for. Joseph had asked him, when you go, when you go there, talk, talk to the Pharaoh for me. But you see, when God is on your side, when man even lets you down, God is still with you. When man gives up on you, God is still with you. When man has forsaken you, God is still with you. So even though the servant forgot, God had not forgotten Joseph. And God was making the way in the wilderness. God was making a way for him where there seemed to be no way. So the king had a dream and he couldn't find anybody to translate it. That was when that servant remembered that I also once had a dream and somebody translated it for me and that dream came to pass. So he goes to the Pharaoh and says, Pharaoh, I know somebody who can translate your dream. Unfortunately, he's in prison. So the Bible says, 
the king sent for Joseph. They had him cleaned up, taken out of his prison garb, cleaned up and presented to the king. The king told him about this, the dream and Joseph was able to translate it. And when Joseph translated it, the king says, I don't know anybody who can do what you are asking me to do. And what was Joseph asking the king to do? The dream, the translation of the dream was there was going to be seven years of plenty. And there was going to be a following seven years of hunger. So during the seven years of plenty, store as much food as you can. So that when the hunger comes, there will be food for the people. The king says, Joseph, I'm giving you that responsible lady. And now you are going to report only to me. That immediately made Joseph the prime minister of Egypt. Oh, brethren, see, it was darkness when he was in prison. Oh, it was in darkness when he was in the well. Oh, it was darkness when he was a slave. It was darkness when they threw him in prison and threw away the key. Oh, but light was coming. It was dark before that morning. And that morning when they brought him out of prison, his life changed. He never went back to prison. And now he was prime minister. See, his darkness... His darkest moment, in the middle of his darkest moment, in the middle of being in prison and with the keys thrown away, God came through for him. God lifted him out of that prison to a new place. Brethren, today the message for you is God is about to lift you out of that darkness to a new morning. God is about to lift you out of that crisis into a new place. God is about to lift you to a new dimension that only he can put you there because nobody, even the people you are relying on, you're looking for a job. You've asked this person, that person, you've called this person, you've called that person, nothing is coming through for you. Oh, but God is about about to open that door for you. He is creating the avenues. He's creating the opportunity for that position to be made available to you. See, is, uh, the, the king did not have a prime minister. But that position was created just for Joseph. God is about to create a position just for you. God is about to lift you to a new place. God is about to do something great in your life. Oh, brethren, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Joseph, in the middle of his darkness, God lifted him and put him in a new pedestal. Raised him to become the prime minister. Hallelujah. Now the people of Israel, now the continuation of the story is, okay, Joseph brought his family and now they were all in Egypt and they had been in Egypt for so many years and the, new, the, the king that made Joseph, the prime minister, is gone. Another king has come over hundreds of years later. A new king comes and he doesn't understand why all these people, all these foreigners are here. What are they doing here? How did they get here? I don't care who Joseph is. Oh, they are Joseph's descendants. I don't care who they are. They're not Egyptians. Let's turn them into slaves. And all of a sudden, the free people of Israel became slaves in Egypt. And they languished as slaves for so many years. And they kept crying on their God, God save us, and nothing was happening. Well, then one day, Moses shows up and says to the people, God says, I should come and set you free. So I'm going to the Pharaoh, and I'm going to tell the people, God says, set my people free. So Moses goes into the palace. Well, you know, he was raised in the palace. And so they knew him as a prince. They didn't know him as a slave. The, 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 all the Egyptians thought Joseph, uh, thought, thought Moses was a prince. They didn't know he was a slave. Well, he had run away and God had called him and God had told him, go back and ask my people to go. So Moses goes back to Egypt and he's able to get into the palace because he's a prince. He walks in. And he goes to the Pharaoh and tells the Pharaoh, Pharaoh, God says, 
I should tell you, let those people go. The king is like, who are you to come tell me to let those people go? He wasn't ready to listen. And so for that, for Moses even coming to make that request, the king got so upset, he decided to increase the burden of the Israelites. And in the past, they used to give, the, they used to make bricks. So they would give them the straw, they would give them the clay, they would give them the water, they would give them everything they needed to make the bricks to build all the infrastructure that Egyptians were building. The sphinxes, the pyramids, the roads, the, 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 the big buildings that they were putting up. They needed people, they needed the bricks, and they needed the manpower to do it. And now, the people who were slaves, who were complaining, who were grumbling that they were slaves. Now they are being told that we won't give you any resources. Go and find the straw yourself. Go and find the clay yourself. But you should make the same number of clays you were making, uh, uh, bricks that you were making when we were supplying you with the resources. Eesh. Eesh. Pardon? <laughs> if, if it was you or I, who say, ah, Moses, eh? we were slaves, oh, we were slaves. At least they were giving us the resources. Now look at your big mouth, you come to say, let my people go and now look, now we are in trouble. And oftentimes we do the same thing. When things are not going the way we want them to go, we will complain and blame the people who were supposed to help us because the help did not come the way we want it to come. The help did not uh, come in the package we were expecting it. Oh, the help even created a little problem on the way. See, but that was darkness for the people of Israel. They were slaves. They were being given supplies to make the bricks. Now they are being told that these supplies will no longer come. But we still want you to make the same number of bricks. So you're going to be whipped. You're going to be caned if you don't make it. In your life, what are you going through today? Does this seem as if it's getting worse and worse? Like Job. One minute, his donkeys are gone. The next minute, his cows are gone. The next minute, his sheep are gone. The next minute, his his kids are gone, buildings broken, servants gone. Square one, he has hit rock bottom. He has hit rock bottom. The people of Israel have hit rock bottom. Now they have to make bricks, but they have to provide their own resources. They would have wanted to go back to the days where the supplies were given to them and they would make 20 bricks a day. Now they have to wake up early in the morning, go look for those supplies and bring them and then come and make those same 20 bricks a day. Life had become worse. Maybe life has become worse for you. Maybe things are not going right for you. Maybe things are going crazy for you. Maybe it's getting worse and worse with each passing day. But you see, God was still with the people of Israel. Then in the middle of that, because of what Pharaoh did, came a plague. Ten plagues. And each pl plague that came, you think it was only the Egyptians that suffered. When You think when the, the wa all the water turned into blood, you think it was only on the Egyptian side? Oh no, all the water turned into blood. You think when the locusts came, they only ate the Egyptian food and left the uh, uh, Israelite food? No, they were all in Egypt. It affected them. You think when the lies came, it only affected the Egyptians? No, it affected the uh, Israelites too. So you see, when times have become hard, all of a sudden, they are also experiencing plagues too. And it's not like when the plagues came, they, they, they made their life easier. No, it made their life even worse. So now life had become even more crazy. But one day, one day, 
the king called Moses and said, Okay, the people can now leave. Oh, brethren, a day is coming where God is going to lift you. God is going to open that door that has been shut. Oh, that God is going to make a way in that wilderness that has been stuck there for years and days and weeks and months. And things are going to be back on its feet. See, brethren, that darkness isn't going to stay forever. No, in the middle of it, God is going to say, let there be light. And the light will come. And when that light comes, morning will be here. That morning is coming, brethren. As the sound of my voice, I want to assure you that the morning is coming. This darkness you are experiencing is not forever. This darkness you are experiencing is just for a moment. See, it is darkest at the at dawn, but in a few minutes, in a few hours, oh, it will be sunlight again. It will be daybreak again. Oh, light is coming your way. It is darkness you are going through, but light is coming. Light is coming. Light is coming. The morning is going to be here soon. The morning is going to be here soon. The morning is going to be here soon. So, brethren, you are not stuck in that darkness. You are not stuck in that darkness. That dark period you are facing, that marriage that is on the rock, that job that you've been fired from, that uh, situation you are faced with, that retirement experience you are having, it's not the end of it. It's only the darkness before the dawn. The dawn is coming. The morning is coming. God is about to lift you up. But even in the middle of your darkness, just as in the middle of the darkness of uh, Joseph, God was still with him. In the middle of the Egyptian Israelites, see, when when the Egyptians made the life of Israel worse, it was now you have to go and look for your own resources to make the clay or the bricks. See, when God is still with you, even when your enemy thinks he has brought you down, God is still with you. Look, God was still with them and God gave them the ability to find those resources and, and still make those bricks. Even though they, they, they were now being asked to do more work, God made it possible. Even with the more work, God made it possible for them to find it the resources and to make the bricks. God is making it possible for you. God is working on new things for you. God is still doing what he does best because it's dawn and soon it will be light. It is dawn right now. Soon it will be daybreak. Oh, it is dawn right now. Soon it will be morning. Your morning is about to come, brethren. That's God's message for you. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't get discouraged. Don't be frustrated. Your morning is about to come. Your morning is about to come. Your morning is about to come. Oh, Job in the middle of his darkness. God lifted him. And God blessed him. Not even like before. He gave him double everything he lost. Oh, his 500 cows became a thousand. His 2,000 camels became 3,000. God doubled everything. God is about to double your blessing. The devil thinks but he's, he's throwing that wrench in there. The devil thinks he's taking away that man in your life that has made life so difficult for you. Oh, God is going to bring you a new man. God is going to give you a new resource. God is going to give you a new job. God is going to give you a new health that is way better than what you were before. God is about to put you in that new place that is better than the one before. Oh, have you ever been fired from a job and you get the next one and it is better than the one you lost? It is better resources, better money, bigger office, bigger responsibility, 
abilities than the one you lost before. Oh, it happened to Joseph. It happened to Daniel. Oh, it will happen to you too because God is on your side. God is going to lift you to that new place. Whoever is behind it, the devil that thought by putting you in this crisis, thinking that he's going to make your life miserable. Oh, he thought he was making Job's life miserable. He didn't know that it was rather going to make Job's life more blessed than before. God is about to do something new in your life. It is darkness right now. Light is coming. It is dawn right now. The morning is coming. That darkness is going to be enveloped by sunlight. Boom. It will hit you like a freight train. You will least expect it. And shoo, it's daylight again. Shoo, it's bright again. Shoo. It's morning again. Morning is about to come. So as you are in this darkness, I prophesy into your life that that light that God has prepared for you will come to pass in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for this ministration that has come to us. You have assured us that this darkness that we are faced with it's about to change into morning. Oh, this darkness we are facing. Oh, the dawn is coming. The light is coming. The morning is coming. May it come soon, Lord. May it come soon, Lord. We receive it. We receive it. We receive it. We receive it into our life. Let that dark situation we are in come to pass and turn into light. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. For it is in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Your light is about to come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.